Well, welcome back, ladies and jelly fiends. Have a guess what the next project might be. Yeah, might be a 450. Right, first part for me, not necessarily the order you should do it in, but the order I'm doing it in. I'm going to put the uh, and start again shall we the auto rotation gear <laughs> onto the main gear um this isn't going to be the first bit going in but i want to just build these up uh the first bit will probably be um replace the tail shaft let me get the shadow out of the way tail shaft there uh with a new belt and then after that um i'm going to put the main shaft in and that will bring the gear in and then do the head, so the feathering shaft and the bearings as well. That's going to be my order. Um, right. Um, again, may not necessarily be your order or the right order, but it's my order. Okay? <laughs> Let's crack on. So there you go. Four screws mounted and secure in the gear. That bit's done. That's an easy bit. And put back together again. There you go. All nice and free and easy. Jobs are good. One. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, next bit for me. Take the belt. Stick it in the boom. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to take the tail apart to get the tail shafts in. But um, let's get it inside there, first of all. There you go, so I threaded in, ready to go. It does seem very bizarre, I've got to say, even now. Um, we used to use you know, tail bands years ago, uh, or tail belts, or whatever you want to call them. And then we went on to torches, which I thought were much better. Um, but now T-Rex or a line seem to have gone back to, um, yeah, tail bands again. Hmm, yeah, belt drives. Strange decision. I know Mikado went down this route and uh, caused nothing but static problems. So, hmm, I don't know. Maybe it's okay now, but I still like torque tubes. Okay, so the belt is still in the tail. Um, it could have gone again, but to be honest, for the sake of I think five or six quid, I've got a new one. So I've now got to take the blades off and the blade holders and take that shaft out, replace it. Because this one, I think, may be slightly off centre. Um, yeah, when you crash them, it's not worth messing about with. They're very thin and they will cause a lot of vibration if they're bent. So I'm going to change it. Okay, so to get your blade holders out, one grip screw just there. Right, and then three screws to hold that plate on, on the back. And then when you release that, you should be able to slide it out far enough so that you don't have to take all the assembly off. That's the theory. A word if you're doing this as well, unlike the last person who ever put this together, don't plaster it in Loctite. You don't need thread locker. You don't need a lot of it in there. Um, I've already rounded that screw off there because it's just absolutely got Loctite plastered in it, as you can see there. Yeah, just don't do it. So, yes, as I was saying, because of some of these fetish over Loctite, I had to strip this down a lot further than I needed to. And I've still got a rounded off screw in there that I can't get out and get have to drill out. Um, yeah, this is why you don't go plastering things in Loctite. You need the tiniest of slivers, and it only needs to be medium hold, not um, industrial strength. <sighs> right, well, I've drilled it. And I still can't get it out, so I'm going to end up ruining this because of some Cleon's obsession for industrial strength Loctite. It wasn't me, before you say anything. <sighs> well, <sighs> Loctite, my nemesis. Again, when you buy helicopters off people that um, have pre-assembled them, you never know what you're going to get but yeah that one there is rock solid in fact i think there's that much loctite on it it's actually welded itself into the shaft itself so it will not come apart so uh 40 quid to get a new one okay so one thing i can do 
It's the head. This. I just thought I'd check that this isn't rammed up with loads of Loctite as well, but I don't think this one's as bad. It, um, it did crack when I undid it, but not so bad. Um, obviously, new feathering shaft is going to go in there. And new bearings as well, because to be honest, when you crash them, the bearings get pretty notchy. So, um, right, let's do that. God, to be honest, even those are pretty tight. The shaft was... Wait, you can see, it's locked tight all on there. Good grief. Right, so you've got your damping rubbers in there, just there. Keep those handy, because you're going to need those. And now, I'm going to take all the bearings out and replace them with new. I should do this off camera, because it's tricky. So, the easiest way I've found to do this, whether it's the right way, again, I don't know, it's my way, is put the bearings on there, assembled, and then you can pull that in, and jobs are good. Un. Make sense? I think so. Oh, and that's the lock tot I use. Just medium strength, and all you need is a little dab, just on the end there. Not much. A little dab on the end there. Tidy little bit. And in she slides. <laughs> With two hands, of course. <laughs> Smooth as a baby's bum. Right, you have to put it in the head. Don't forget your lid washer. And then that slides in there. And there you go. That's one side assembled. Nice and smooth. Lovely. Oh, those inner ones are always a bit of a bugger to get out. <laughs> Take your time. Be careful. It'll come. Yet again, somebody got a little bit ambitious with the Loctite. I think the Loctite, the bearing in. Luckily, it's not seized up. Jesus. So, I'm going to use the old shaft to press this one in. Um, one thing I didn't mention, probably should have done, your bearings, I don't know if you can see that, do have an in and an out, and they are marked up. This one is in, and obviously on the other side it will be broken. Yeah, but in and out, so put them the right way. And there you go. One rebuilt head. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Perfect. So, now we've got the head all back together. What I am going to do is put the main shaft in um, and connect it to this head. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to slide it back up again to get the gear in when I get the tail, ordered the new tail, as I said. Tail will go on, and then that will go around the front gear there. So I'll have to lift the headstock up to get it in there and connect it at the bottom. But I can connect it up to the head and I can get it in place. So that's what I'll do. Now importantly, again, like the 550, you need that washer on. If you ain't got that washer on, you're going to get a lot of slop. There you go, washer on. Can you see it? Just there. Long shaft, or long part of the shaft, goes down, like so. Boom, like that. There you go. And then I'll put the head on. So, as in the 550, make sure you got the hole in the shaft and the hole in the head lined up. New screw in. You don't need Loctite on these because the castle nut is a captive one. There you go. Head back on. Lively jubbly. Got the anti-rotation bracket on there. Not auto-rotation bracket. Auto-rotation is on the gear. Do. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, that's about as far as I can go for now. So, uh, next bit for you, and tomorrow for me, will be fitting the tail. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for me, it's another day. For you, it's mere seconds. YouTube time. So, the tail has turned up. Uh, came from Midland Helicopters. Next day delivery. Well done to them. They're always pretty good. And also, my um, counter-rotating linkages and ball sets and all that stuff. They've turned up from Align T-Rex. 
Uh, they go on the on from the swash plate up to the the head. Uh, I was missing one, so I got a set. Yeah, I've got some spares now. So um, the tail, as I did before, has got the band in it, and now just going to put all this together, mount it all up, and hopefully today we should get it completely rebuilt. Right, let's crack on. Oh, sorry for the noise in the background, by the way. Uh, yesterday it was builders, today Biggles is flying about with his mates with the afterburners on full chat. Very bizarre that when you come into an airport, you have to um, limit your noise, but hey, Biggles can do what he wants over a residential area. Not a problem. Mm, am I ranting? Yeah, maybe just a Mickey Gaka. Mickey Gaka. <laughs> so, when you're putting this together, key thing to look out for. Obviously you need your belt in there. Um, but that plastic bit there has to be removed because under there is a hole and in the boom is a hole and guess what they both go together so there you go it's removed you can see there hole in the boom hole just there and then the peg marries the two together Oh, there you go pegs in place don't forget your fin actually thinking about it i might need to put that on first no i think i'm okay yeah i think should have put that on first but i think i've got away with it new tail shaft that's so there you go then the new tail shaft in belt around it obviously got to put the screws in yet two screws at the back there one screw at the front and then rebuild everything here Simples. Simples. Okay, maybe not quite as simples. Um, yeah. Let me try and explain. Hold on a minute. I need to put the camera down. <laughs> right, so if you're using this bit, okay, all the connection rods and everything like that, then obviously you need to put that on first because it's held in there. Or you can disconnect it, as I've just done. Um, but it's like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. You, you can put that in, but you've got to bear in mind that then you've got to slide that over the top to make it easier on myself I'm going to use the old one okay so I've assembled it that far um, now bear in mind again you only need a little bit of Loctite just to hold those in place tiny little bit also do yourself a favor and go through and Loctite or the other screws you've got two on that side as well um, or check them at least because uh, a line have a tendency of when they ship things they leave them loose word of warning so now for me, uh, again, maybe different for you, um, I'm just going to slide that whole assembly on. There's nothing wrong with it. I've checked it. Everything's fine. It's uh, it's moving fine. There's nothing broken. So it's just a couple of screws on the bottom there. Just, oops, that's it. Go on. Swing around. Go on. Go on. Thank you. Yeah, a couple of screws on the bottom there. And um, that's about it. Of course, a little bit of Loctite. Not too much. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold back. Not that much. As I mentioned, always check your screws. Good job I did, because even on the old head, that one there was very, very loose. That one there, yeah, you can hardly see it, tiny thing. Yeah, so always check your screws. Make sure they're nice and tight. Don't want the screw loose. Mm -hmm. And there you go, tail all back together. Let's make sure it spins all right. Yeah, lovely. Excellent stuff. Right, so all I've got to do now is attach the front bit to the body. Simple as. Mm. Now similar to the rear on this where it had the hole you've got the slot on this one so that slot goes into a keeper slot there. Uh, got no chance of showing you actually inside there but when you put it in which I don't think I can do with one hand obviously and you can feel it slide in there. If it hits a button stops no good you need to slide it in you need to feel it slide. So, I remember earlier how we put the head in. Now we'll take it out again. <laughs> there you go. You've only got to take it as far as about that, just so you can get the gear in. Like that. Okay. Now, the really important bit here is not to get the belt twisted. Because if your belt's twisted, you tell I go the wrong way. So, be very, very careful. So, I now remember why I hate belt drives 
and starting to hate 450s, 470s rather. Um, so you've got to gently tap that head in because that's a compression fit on the bottom there. Obviously trying to line up the holes at the same time and then what happens is um, that retaining gizmo basically goes on the bottom and then the, uh, the screw goes all the way through. But you've got to gently tap it from the top and try and hold it from the bottom. It's a bit of a strange design, I've got to say. Well, although this may have been designed by somebody with a degree, it weren't an engineering degree. God, well, it's nothing like the engineering degree I took. Anyway, right, we are there. <laughs> what an arse of an idea this is. It's bad enough having a belt for the tail, but trying to get that collar in just there, Get it all lined up, uh, and then I found the, uh, <laughs> the new colours seem to be slightly bigger than the old ones, so I had to drill a little bit out. Um, yeah, but you have to line everything up, you have to get everything all in line, and then try and get the bolt in. It is an absolute nightmare, and there's tension on that belt as well, so yeah, nothing's easy. But anyway, I have done it. Um, close to throwing it, I'll be honest, but I have done it. Right. <sighs> I think now, I'll take a five minute break. Right, well I've had a break, I've had my tea, or dinner, or whatever you want to call it. I've had some food, um, always makes you feel better. So, just a bit of tinkering to do now. Um, Stabiliser bars back on, fin on there, um, put on the uh, rods there. What else have I got to do? Not much to be honest. And then obviously set everything up, go through the vortex and make sure everything's level. All blades on, obviously, yeah. And, um, and then it'll be ready to fly. It's, um, it's coming up to Friday tomorrow. It's supposed to be a nice day. Saturday, hmm, another good day. So, hey, who knows? It may be a weekend where I can give it a test flight. So, it's been the usual tinkering time and I think I'm about there. Set these up as best I can. Obviously going to have to go through the fly bar and fly barless controller, uh, the vortex, and set those up and get everything level and sorted out. But I think mechanically wise, we're there. <laughs> it's been a pain, and it's been interesting. Um, would I want to do it again? Not really. Do I like four seventies? I've yet to fly it properly, but um, building them, no, <laughs> don't like them. But there you go, we shall see how it flies. It might change my mind yet. Right, let's, um, let's go through the vortex. Right, so if nobody's ever seen these, there you go, that's the data pod that you got with the Spartan. What I'm going to do first is use my trusty old spirit level, like that, and I'm going to set it up so the helicopter is level, and then I know that I've got a base that is level, and I can set everything else to a level as well. Obviously got my digital pitch gauge as well and all the other goodies that I need uh, to get the helicopter level, to get the blades level and to get everything as it should be. So there you go, it's not exact science but we're level across the motor and we are level across the boom. I'm level! So because I've had everything off in this area, um, I'm not going to go through the setup on the data pod yet. What I'm going to do is I've got the stick at mid stick and I'm just going to see that everything mechanically is right. Simple. So as you can see straight away, that's at six. And let me turn it around. And the other blade's three. So they both need a little bit of adjustment. And there you go, at mid stick again. And yes, I have checked the monitor. It is mid stick. And there we go, that blade is at zero. So, try and set the other blade up. Ah, there you go, both blades set up. Right, I'm going to double check now the swash plate. I know I probably should have done that first, but I'm going to do it now. And then we can check the blades again. I'll just make work for myself, basically. So, just to kind of try and guide you through what I'm doing and the way I do it. Maybe right, maybe wrong, works for me. Um, I get my blades level, first of all, and then I put a blade, use one single blade, on each one of the uh, swash horns, okay? So that's on there at the moment, as you can see, we're almost spot on. 
if we wasn't I would adjust that servo slightly put it there let's go around and again almost spot on now I can trim this out with the uh, fly wireless controller in a minute um, so yeah basically you go around all three points uh, and that one's a little bit out, so I'm going to have to trim that somewhat. So basically, that's how I set up the swash plate. Now, yes, you can take the head off. You can put a swash plate leveler on there, but it works for me. Um, what I'm going to do now is use the Spartan controller, the data pod, to go around and just adjust these servos and make sure that every single one of those is bob on. So, first thing I want to do is go into setup. I want to go into swash. 20 right this is where we trim things up so as you can see there as I move things up and down it's going to trim it so I'm going to need two hands for this so that's set the trim trim the ball to zero that's number one number two number three um, so you just go through the menus and basically trim it yeah up and down as need be all right um, have I finished yes I have next um, that's your swash plate. Uh, you can go all sorts of directions, but I'm not going to touch that again. Oh, hold on. The controller's screaming at me because I've not touched it. <sighs> Loving thing. Right. Um, collective uh, direction as well. That should be okay, so I'm not going to do that. That is your collective, which way it goes. Right, now it's saying I've got the line the blades with the boom, and this is where we're going to set the pitch. Again, I need some time alone for this. Right, so that's the collective zero degrees set. Zero degrees. Next one is your max collective. Um, you want 12 degrees on the, well, I say 12 degrees, probably on this little heli. Um, you probably don't, but I'm going to set it for 12 because I always fly at 12. Um, and it's just a kind of industry standard. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, bloody hell, too far. Six, five, four, three, two, there you go, 12 degrees. Bang. Right, next one is your max collective the opposite way. So again, 12 degrees, a little bit too far, let's come back. All I'm doing is pressing these top buttons like that. There you go, one more, 12 degrees. Excellent, press it again. Uh, cyclic direction, that doesn't need to be changed because I've messed about with it. Um, and now aileron, zero degrees. So, as you see, it's out a little bit, so we need to draw that back a bit and get that to zero. Oh, I need two hours for this, I'm struggling. <laughs> now I know why I'm struggling. It's eight degrees, you burk, not zero. That's because I'm trying to look at a camera screen and look at this through the camera screen. So it's eight degrees there. I should know this, I've done it enough. There you go, eight degrees. So we're good there. Next one, again, right, we're going to place the blades perpendicular. Bear with. Perpendicular it is. Right. Eight degrees. Ooh, way over there. Let's dial it back a bit. There you go, Tiger. Come back a bit. Oops, too far. Seven, seven, eight, nine. Eight degrees. Perfect. And then we'll go eight degrees the other way. And that's it. Eight degrees both ways, 12 degrees along the boom, job done. Right, gone through and tweaked it a little bit because obviously when you try to do it on camera, it's not easy. So I just went and double checked and triple checked and checked and checked and checked with a check. Right, so everything's level. I'm happy with it. Everything's going in the right direction. I think it's time we give it a little flight. Um, I don't know how I'm going to record this. In fact, I don't think I'm going to record it because it's just more hassle than it's worth. But um, yeah, let's give it a little flight. So I tried to record this last night and failed. So here we go. I'm not sure what you're going to see.
as you can see it's pretty dark outside now so that is that the 470 is rebuilt i know the the video has been a bit random all over the place but hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks from it probably not to buy a 470 if we're honest but um i don't suppose it's that bad it's just um it, it's not like the old t-rexes of years ago it's very much more difficult to work on uh, compared to a 450 or something like that but i'll see how it flies i mean we hovered it in the back garden looks okay yeah uh, the test is when we start chucking it about the air but we shall see saturday's looking pretty good so who knows we may get it up in the air anyway thanks for joining me yet again and um hopefully you know there's been a little bit of entertainment in this somewhere for you and um yeah enjoy your flying catch you later bye bye <laughs>